Welcome back to the program. Detail an exclusive new report alleging systematic torture and killing by the Assad regime. The allegations are extensively documented by a defector, a former member of the Syrian military police, codenamed Caesar. CNN, along with The Guardian newspaper, have received exclusive access to this devastating investigation, and we're going to continue this discussion with our distinguished jurors who are chairman and members of the panel. Let me ask you first, Sir Desmond, who is Caesar? Who was he? Why did he do what he did? Well, for about 13 years, Caesar was working in the um, military police in, in, in Syria. And his job, for most of that time, was to act as a scenes of crime investigator, taking photographs of uh, uh, the, the sort of criminal activity that uh, is photographed by members of the police. However, since the onset of the... Um, uh, of the... Uh, of the war. Of the war, civil war. <clears throat> he, his functions changed, and that of his unit changed. They changed to taking photographs of bodies uh, that arrived from the detention centre, bodies uh, of people who were killed, seen, killed in the detention centres, and brought to a hospital, a military hospital. I can't tell you where it is, but I know where it is, but I can't tell you where it is for a number of reasons. And these bodies are brought there in order that they might be photographed uh, for, for reasons that I think we may have touched upon, simply to show that a record was made at that point to document the killings, to, to, to enable the government, presumably, or the people higher up the chain, to know that the orders given to kill the people had in fact been carried out. So uh, to avoid any possibility of anyone being let out by for reasons of bribery or anything else. All right. So, so, so that the bodies were there to confirm that the orders to kill had been carried out. Sir so Geoffrey, as far as you know, who are these bodies? Who were these people? Were they prisoners of war? Were they political dissidents? Did Caesar know who they were? No, and he's quite clear that he never saw an execution and he never saw an act of torture. There is... A subject so he was just photographing the result? Correct. And subject to anything that Dr. Hamilton said, I, we're not aware of them bearing any marks of being men in the services. Um, but we probably can't go any further than that, not least, of course, because they are nearly all without any form of clothing of any kind or any other mark that would indicate whether they were soldiers or not. What happens to the bodies, as far as Caesar told you? Um, our understanding is they were taken from the place of photographing to mass graves in a rural area close by um, where they were buried. So, again, do you see evidence of a cover-up? Not just mass killings, as the defector alleges and that you've determined, but of a cover-up by the regime? Is all of this, these figures, these, these, these numbers? Well, yes. If you, taking bodies, if it be the case, that you have executed leaving a misleading trail as to what happened to them or allowing for a misleading trail to be left, burying them in an anonymous grave, if that isn't consistent with the cover-up, I don't know what is. So the families were told that, what, they just died of natural causes? Typically, yes. Mm -hmm. You have prosecuted major crimes of world leaders at UN-sanctioned tribunals. Can you take this evidence to a tribunal? What are you comfortable that it would prove? Crimes against humanity, more serious war crimes? Tell me what this can do in a court of law. Certainly crimes against humanity. Uh, this, th this evidence could underpin a charge of crimes against humanity without any shadow of a doubt. Of course, it's not for us to make a decision. All we can do is evaluate the evidence and say this evidence is capable of being accepted by a tribunal uh, 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 as genuine, because we've come to the conclusion that the defector was genuine, and his evidence is in, in, independently uh, uh, underpinned by scientific evidence. And therefore, looking at the evidence uh, uh, as, it, as it emerges, we, I have little doubt, and I think this goes to my colleagues too, that this is compelling evidence. Compelling evidence. And again, you are the lawyers and the prosecutors, you're the scientist. What kind of information did you get from them before you looked at the pictures? Or did you just look at the pictures before knowing much about the rest of them? I, I was aware that Caesar existed. 
I was aware that he was said to have uh, got many images showing many people out of the out of Syria, and essentially that was all I knew when I looked at them. I looked at the images cold, as it were, so that I could form my conclusions scientifically, and then those conclusions could be matched to what Caesar was saying, and either clearly one would support the other, or it wouldn't. Um, tell me a little bit more in this regard about, about Caesar. His motivation, was he against the regime? Did he plot to do this? How did he come to do this, and was he exaggerating? I mean, tell me what made you feel comfortable about him. Um, his motivation was that he was distressed by what he saw and wanted to provide the evidence uh, to others, and he took some personal risk to do that, uh, as the report makes clear. Um, so I think, so, that, so that's his motivation. There's one incident, one thing about Caesar that we ought to make quite clear, although we've got some 23,000 odd images are, that we've seen, or rather we've surveyed in general terms, that come from him, and there are other images that come from him, there are other images within the overall 55,000 that come from others, so that there is material still coming out, it may be, or that has come out of a like kind. And that's important, bearing, sorry. Go ahead. Bearing in mind that war crimes trials, as Sir Desmond knows, as well as anyone, starts with a small body of evidence. And once that's known about, particularly, it gives confidence to others to add to it. So that this evidence wouldn't be the only evidence that one would imagine ever going to a particular war crimes trial. You, you'd have to have other evidence as well. Let me just finish by asking you, um, Stuart Hamilton. This is wartime in Syria. Could these have been war injuries? And, of course, everybody is going to want to know, could these pictures have been doctored? Certainly. Um, <clears throat> firstly, there were occasional bodies that showed gunshot wounds, but the sort of thing you'd expect to see in an armed conflict is multiple gunshot wounds, blast injuries, explosion injuries, fire injuries, maybe injuries from collapse of buildings, falling from buildings, overrunning by military vehicles. That's the sort of thing you'd expect to see in war casualties. In and a, you didn't see that? I just didn't see it. I saw a few gunshot wounds, which clearly could be a form of execution, could be um, during an armed conflict, but the vast majority are the sort of things we're seeing here. And digitally doctored. These were digital images you looked at? Yes. We sent them to Mr Cole, the digital forensic expert, who confirmed these had not been doctored after they had been produced. And as far as I'm concerned... The injuries that can we see are so compelling in so many people that to use makeup or special effects or something like that prior to the image being taken is just frankly unrealistic. Devastating report, which obviously will have profound ramifications. Stuart Hamilton, Sir Geoffrey Nice, Sir Desmond De Silva, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. As we said, a devastating indictment of the Syrian regime. And after a break, we'll go to Damascus, where President Bashar Assad today portrayed himself as a man of the people whose future is bound by public opinion. Just listen. I see no reason why I shouldn't stand. If there is public desire and a public opinion in favor of my candidacy, I will not hesitate for a second to run for election. Of course, with over 100,000 killed and over 5 million Syrians forced from their homes, the sample of public opinion is getting harder to come by. What about this grave report we've just been talking about, The View from Damascus with CNN's Fred Pleitkin, when we come back?